What is going on, everybody? This is the Undefeated by Choice podcast brought to you by Still Fist. And we have got a fight this weekend, March 6th, our very first kickboxing event. Super excited for that. Talent all across Utah coming out um, and uh, for our very first event. And I couldn't be more excited. It's part of the um, combat sports takeover Still Fist is uh, participating in. So, man, um, it's... Um, you know, kickbox. Like I said um, on the last one, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to figure out my camera and everything here. Um, like I said with the on the last one, it was uh, you know getting participants for MMA is isn't always the easiest, just because not everybody participates in MMA. Some people just like to specialize in certain sports or certain aspects of martial arts or combat sports, and um, so it's not always easy to get participants for MMA, but then we, the minute we announced kickboxing, it was like a flood of people wanting to participate, saying, count me in, sign me up. We had people from the MMA world saying, sign me up, you know, wanting to, uh, you know, perfect, perfect a per- certain part of their craft or some that just feel more comfortable kickboxing than they do doing MMA. So it was, uh, it was awesome to see all the support of people who want to be involved and then how easy it was to put a card together and a good card together for um, <clears throat> for this weekend, March 6th, at the Union Event Center. Doors open at 6, fights start at 7. You can buy tickets at the door or that you can buy them at stillfistfight.com. Also, uh, our next fight card is April 4th, just a few, few short weeks away. Um, actually, it's about a month away. <laughs> but it... It's in. Ex- it's exactly a month away, but you know, it feels like a few short weeks. When you, if you're in your training, you're getting ready. Before you know it, it's going to be April fourth. Time to fight. So uh, look forward to that. Uh, I've been doing kind of a, a breakdown of um, the fights on this next UFC card, um, and uh, the Izzy Israel Adesanya versus Adesanya versus uh, Yoel Romero, and. I did the breakdown of them and what I thought about, you know, what the strengths of weakness or what the keys to victory might be for for each one of those fighters. And you know, I have to say, um, it's pretty hard to, to think that anyone's going to beat Izzy at this point. You know what I mean? Like Izzy is just so talented, so per, per, so precise. He's got the right mindset for for this fight game he's got all the right tools he's got everything going for him the x factor is yo romero is he's a freak uh he is he's talented beyond measure he's you know he's old and he's still you know just is just keeping in just like the young guys he's got so much going for him he's got power he his wrestling is the only one the only person in the UFC who's more accomplished than him. The only person in, in in combat sports that's more accomplished than him in wrestling is Henry Cejudo. And and that's it. It's those two at the top of the heap. Um, you know, Daniel Cormier was close, but he, he wasn't he didn't make it to the Olympics. The only person to to that's more accomplished than him is is Henry Cejudo. So but he doesn't use his wrestling. We were, I already went over that. We already talked about that. What I'm here to talk about today is Jean Wei Li versus Joanna Yon Uh <clears throat> This fight is probably going to be the best fight out of out of the out of the entire night. This is probably fight of the night. These two are super talented. You know, uh, Jean Wei Li's at the top of the list right now. At the top of the heap right now, Joanna was there for the longest time, and uh, you know she's trying to work her way back to the glory of being a champion. And um, she's got a lot of tools that could get her there. Um, just my gut feeling is it's not going to happen. And I guess I'm kind of going to get into. I might as well just get into it. Why I don't think that she's going to reclaim that title, and uh, why Jean Wele is uh, her being. Her being a champion is huge for this sport. It's it's bigger than I think most people realize. I think it's it plays more of a part than most people are anticipating, and it's going to make the sport a lot more global. It's going to make the lot the sport a lot more popular, and it's going to bring a lot more money into the sport. Just having her as a champion at this moment. So <clears throat> let me get into it. I'll explain it. First of all, I think the keys. 
um, to victory or kind of or kind of just kind of the breakdown of the fighters. Uh, Jean Wei Li is a power first, speed second type of fighter. She uh, has the speed, but she wants to throw power. She, everything she throws, she wants to hurt you with. She's not one to really fill you out or or try to kind of find a spot, um, you know, by working in. Uh, she wants to hit you with big, powerful shots right away. Um, and that's just her, her game. That's just how she fights. You see her hit pads. You see her. I mean, everybody is commenting. Every commentator thinks they have, like, the inside track by saying, you should see this girl. This girl's training. And she just hits pads. It's full on. It's every, every, yeah. She put that out there so everybody's seen it. Everyone knows it. Um, so we all know that she comes with power she comes hard she comes to knock you out she comes to put you asleep and that's that's that but she is fast like i sometimes you you we get into these discussions like well one's power the other one and one speed and we'll see which one wins um there's just the 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 variable of speed between these two is very small obviously on the flip side joanna is super fast she's she throws lots of lots of uh strikes in a combination she'll come at you and like you know she'll just pepper you with shots and not um i mean it will come lightning fast just bop, 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 and she'll just you know if you're standing there if you plant your feet she's gonna fire off 10 to 12 shots and and then usually what she's doing is she's throwing those, those little shots and then she finishes with power she doesn't start with power she starts with the peppering shots trying to get a bunch of bunch of shots in and as she's throwing and as you're covering up she's looking for her opening to finish with a power shot so that's where those two va uh vary in their strike uh, striking approach one wants to hit you with power then she's going to hit you with three or four really fast shots the other one's going to hit you with nine or ten fast shots and then finish with power um so i think that's like <clears throat> the big difference in their in their striking ability striking abilities is one's more of put you to sleep in one shot the other one's put you to sleep after peppering you with a bunch of shots um and, you know and i say put you to sleep which joanna hasn't really been known to put people to sleep recently but um you know that's what she's looking for she's uh, so that gets into the second part of what i'm saying is she's a point fighter she's one that has no problem going to decisions because if she goes to the decision most likely she's going to win because she's going to land three times the volume that you're going to land. She's going to have more significant strikes landed than you are um, just because of the output of strikes that she has, that she uses. She's just going to keep, you know, hitting you and hitting you and hitting you. Every time you step forward, she's going to hit you three or four times and she's going to kick you. And she's 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 a really good point fighter. Um, and and usually when she goes to a decision, she's going to win in, in that aspect because that's, what she's best at um and she's going to want to keep you at a distance she's going to keep you within legs length within arms length she's not really going to come in when she does come in she's pretty good at the clinch she's got a good muay thai background and so she's pretty good pretty effective in the clinch so that's the other part is when she, her fighting in the past when she'd be peppering new shots the girls she'd be fighting would think, okay, I got to get out of this. I can't stay inside her range. I got to get inside. So then once they get inside, she clenches up and she fires off a bunch of knees and elbows. She's really good and effective within the clinch. So she's got a really good stand-up style as far as that goes because she wants to keep you at a, a, a point fighting distance. But if you try to get too close, she's going to step inside. She's going to clench you and she's going to fire off elbows and knees uh, and some dirty boxing. Uh, Jean Wei Li on the other side, she wants to walk forward. She want, doesn't want to be in point fighting um, distance. She wants to close the distance. She wants to get in close. She wants to. Th she also is very good inside the clinch, very effective inside the clinch. And so she wants to constantly get into that range with you. And then she wants to take you to the ground. She wants to go to the ground with you. She's very efficient on the ground. Um, she's won almost, she's won the majority of her fights are TKOs. Then the second half is, um, submissions. She's got a ton of submissions on her record. Um, like almost, it's almost between, between TKOs and submissions. 
it's i think it's 50 50 i think it you know it, it's it's very close to being equal of how she could finish the fight and then she has three decisions on her record and only one loss and um so she's um so yeah her ground game is just as efficient as her stand-up she's going to get you to the ground she's going to be heavy on you she's going to control you she's going to ground and pound or she's going to look for the submission Yoana has great takedown defense. I mean, she has. I don't. I can't really think of very many times you've ever seen her on the ground. I believe Valentina had her on the ground a little bit um, it, when they fought. I, I can't remember exactly how that fight went down. I know Valentina won it in decision, and it was pr- pretty decisive. I believe that she took her to the ground, but other than that, I can't think of another time that she was really on the ground very much. Uh, you know, she fought Claudia Gadelia twice, who leads the women's division in takedowns. And I don't think Claudia ever got her to the ground. So she's really good at, at ground defense. We, I don't know how she is actually on the ground, what, what her technique is and what her skill level is when she's on the ground. But I know getting her down is not an easy task. Um, so that's, you know, where where this is like that. This is a very good um match up to see who plays to their strengths the best who can get to their strengths the easiest is um is Joanna gonna be able to keep her outside and, and keep her at distance with strikes use her footwork to stay outside or is Wei Li going to be able to close the distance get in there get the clench and get her to the ground and take her out on the ground once they get to the ground is Joanna gonna be able to defend herself on the ground and get back up use her great defense it, to even stop the takedown altogether like this is a great um fight to to gauge who is the better fighter this isn't oh you're a terrible wrestler but you're a good stand-up you're a good wrestler but you're terrible terrible at stand-up we'll see which one wins that happens all the time in mma we see that fight we see that fight more often than this one this one is two really good strikers um with different types of of striking styles but both very effective within those two styles and then um you know one fighter that does have the advantage on the ground but i I, the other one but joanna has such good takedown defense we'll see we'll see what can happen so this is a very interesting fight i think it i think it easily goes down as fight as fight of the night but there are some things to take into consideration um that i don't think we pay enough attention to i think we listen to what fighters are saying a lot rather than like the reality of the situation you know joanna in her last few fights that hasn't gone her way she's blamed everybody everybody and everything uh except her team uh she fights at att american top team and she's never said a bad word about her team but the truth of the matter is, is she was sixteen or third. Sorry, she was thirteen and zero when she was fighting out of Poland. She switches over to ATT and has gone four and three in in the the you know in in that time in the time that she's been there, she's four and three. So she's almost a 50-50 fighter. If she loses this week, she's a fifty-fifty fighter since her move to to Florida to ATT. Um. You know, and I think that just goes to to show um, what being a hungry fighter can can turn you into, and what being a fighter who lives the life of luxury can turn you into. And I don't want to I don't want to badmouth um, the life that she lives. I follow her on Instagram, and you see her, and man, she's living. She's at Disney World like every week. I swear. And, you know, she's she's taking pictures on boats and she's relaxing and she's at the pool and she's living a good life. And by all means, she's earned it. I mean, she went 13 and 0 as a hungry fighter out of Poland who was just a, an absolute monster who was taking on every challenge, who was who was, you know, out fighting everybody. And so many of her fights were won by decision. So she was going to all out wars five rounds every single time, time and time again, showing up and just being an absolute killer, training her, training like an animal and, and, and doing everything it took to be champion, sacrificing everything to be champion. Um, 
And then she became champion, and life got a little easier for her. She got a little more money. She was able to, to live a little better life. And by all means, she earned it. She has earned it. She has put in the time, put in the effort, put in the rounds to live a comfortable life and be able to do what she wants. But it does, it has come at a cost to her winning rec- her wins and just her fight career. Um, you know, I thought her going to ATT was going to be a good thing because it was going to evolve her game. She's going to take everything that she already has and she's going to get better. She took every, she's going to take everything she already, more, all the tools she had, she's going to get more tools. But Joanna has never changed in all of the fights I've ever seen. It's always the same fight. You never get a different look from her. You never get a different style from her. It's always the same. The problem with that is everyone's seen tape on her. Everyone's been gunning for her. Everyone has had their target on her. When they're not in fight camp for anybody specific, they're thinking about her. When they are, um, you know, she was the, the reigning champ for so long. She was the one that everyone was watching tape on. When they weren't in camp, it was about her. So when you don't change your style at all, they're going to find the holes in your game and they're going to be able to to go after those holes in your game because they have nothing else to worry about. They have nothing else to think about. You are the you're the top of the heap. So while her game has not changed at all while being at ATT and hasn't uh, evolved at all, she's still such a killer. She's able to compete and do a good you know, do some good things. I mean, she had her fight against uh, Rose, and Rose has her number and has shown that she doesn't have the toughest chin. She doesn't have the strongest chin. Her chin is in question. Uh, and Rose showed that. Um, <clears throat> I can't remember who she fought after Rose, but then she, sh- then she fought Valentina, and Valentina showed holes in her game. Um, And then she comes and fights Michelle Watterson, who I love Michelle Watterson. Uh, She's great for the sport. She's, you know, champ mom or mom champ or whatever it is. And she's one of those fan favorites, fan friendly fighters that everyone loves. And and they do like to watch her. But she's also a point style fighter. And that plays to Ioana's advantage because Ioana's just so fast. Uh, So and, and Michelle's not really known for her power. So it's not like she could really stop Ioana with her power. So it wasn't a good matchup for Michelle. It was the matchup that had to be made because Michelle was was doing really good. Ioana was coming back down. She had to fight a contender. So, I mean, it was the right move for Ioana. It was the right fight for Ioana to put her back on the map to see if she's championship ready. But I just don't see it happening with her being at ATT and, you know, not being this hungry young fighter like she was before. Now, on the flip side of that, Jean Wei Li is that exact thing. She is what Joanna was. She's not every time she posts something, it's her training. It's her in the gym. It's her grinding. It's her working. Um, <clears throat> she's doing everything right. She's doing everything she can to be marketable. She's getting out in public. She's smiling. She's learning English. You know, she, she that was on one of her uh one of the videos. I can't remember which one it was. I can't remember if it was Anatomy of a Fighter or um Oh, it was the countdown, UFC countdown. And she's, you know, she's sitting there with an English tutor so that she can cater to the English fans. Um, you know, she's she's hungry to be a champion. She's hungry to stay champion. And, um, you know, she's stuck with her same camp. She's been with her same camp for all 20, you know, for her 20, victor- 20 victories and probably before the 20 victories. But, I mean, her whole fight career, she's been with the same camp, same people. And she's dedicated that's all she thinks about it's all she wants to do is just train and 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 be the champion be the best in the world and she wants to fight the best in the world she uh did an interview where i guess she said something like you know i'd like to fight valentina and in her mind was just saying you know one day i would like to fight her because she's the best in the world and i would like to challenge myself against it and valentina took that as offensive and was like you still got you you know you're still young you still got some 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 stuff to prove before you can step up to me and she apologized she's like no i did not mean disrespect i mean this girl is martial artist to the core i mean she's just like there was no disrespect you're the best in the world one day i would like to challenge myself against you but i wasn't saying i want to do this super fight right now to you know get a fat paycheck and then move on no she's she's here for the long haul so um you know i really uh 
I, I really just I'm I'm high on Jean Whaley. I am I am I think she is going to be here for a long time. I think that she is exactly what this sport needs. Um <clears throat> but I really I really I think that her she's a bigger deal than we're giving her credit for like her being the champion, her being the first Chinese champion is way bigger deal than any of us are making it out to be, uh, for, for these reasons. Um, you know, you looked at like the old pride days in Japan, an Asian market, uh, that was huge. It was big. There's, you know, selling out stadiums and, and these fighters were treated like Kings and they were, you know, so well respected. And, you know, rampage always talks about all my Japanese fans, they blow my American fans out of the water. And that was a very small island of Japan. You know, it was, it's, it's not China. And so you had one and and that went under and I I don't know why. Um, I think I, I think I, I think I know why, but I don't really want to speak to it because I don't really have the the knowledge on that. Um, but if I had to guess, you know, it's harder when you're in that area and you're counting on the same fan base over and over and over again because people aren't really traveling to Japan to watch their fight, their favorite fighter fight. So you're trying to fill these stadiums with the same people every single month or wh- however many events they had. And people eventually get tired of that. You know, it's like, you know, I live, I live here in Utah. I can't remember the last time I watched the Jazz play. You know what I mean? Like, uh, it was, it, you just you know, you go about living your life and you don't always, you know, that's the the good thing about the UFC is they travel around so much that sometimes it's like, oh, it's worth it to, you know, travel and go to the fight. But even if you don't travel to make it to the fight, you still have a brand new state with brand new fans who want to have that experience. So I believe that might've been the problem is people just, the, the attendance wasn't always just sell out stadium because they were putting on great fights and they had great fighters. Uh, but then, you know, it got to the point where you just couldn't, meet the quota you couldn't get enough fans in there um i could be totally wrong i could be talking on my butt i have no idea um but i would to my mind i think that's what it is um <clears throat> but then you have you know one championship out of singapore again not very huge not 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 the size of china and uh and they're i mean they're doing good they put on good fights um they're not as uh, well known in the american market just because of where they are in time zones and just, we already have the UFC. We already have, you know, the, the greatest fighters in the world in, in our backyard fighting for us every month, every week, every week at this point. So, but they're doing good things. You know, they, they're, and they're paying their fighters really, really well. And they are respecting their fighters a, a lot and they're doing things correctly there. China, um, didn't get in They're They're late to the MMA game. Uh, Originally, when MMA started, they didn't really see it as something that was going to be bankable. They saw it was kind of a blood sport, and you had these, you know, characters um, that just were these brutes, and they weren't really um, they weren't really true to the. At that point, they didn't see them as true to martial arts. They just saw them as kind of bar fighting thugs. And they they want to stay true to the martial arts. So if you fight kung fu, you fight kung fu. If you do, if you wrestle, you wrestle. If you like, you, you don't mix. You just you stick to what you're learning. Um, but I think that they're coming around to see. Oh, this is this is something. This is something to pay attention to. And now they have one of their own that's a champion. They have one of their own that's the best in the world that actually came in under the radar and and didn't you know, wasn't, wasn't, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Fostered from the, from, from China. Um, she was, they were doing it on their own pretty much. And the reason I'm I'm saying that is because we all know when China gets behind an athlete in a certain type of way, they go all in. You know, I was just, I posted something on my Twitter about the China, you know, the, the Olympic training center, the Chinese Olympic training center. And this was in 2016. It said that they spent 60, 600 million dollars on their athletes in, at the um, Olympic Training Center. 
Um, and these are all ages. These are from little kids in diapers all the way up to the athletes that are actually competing. So, you know, it's totally different there. If you are part of their, what they're trying to build, um, to be the best in the world, they do it from birth. It's a lot like the Cuban wrestling when they pluck you out as a, at a young age and they put you in these boarding schools where you're wrestling all the way, you know, till you get to the training centers and whatever, you know, so on and so forth. Um, you know, that's how China gets down. Like they, you, if they get behind MMA, you will have boarding schools that that's all you're doing from birth is you're going and you're training, uh, and you're training as a, a martial, a mixed martial artist to be the best in the world. And I think that there's more cause for that because the Olympics come around every four years, every two years or whatever. And, um, you know, you only get so many athletes to step on the stage, but if they get these fighters in MMA, they got all these different weight classes. They're fighting every single weekend. Um, they have a much better chance to show that they can be the best in the world and that they can take over and have all the belts and that they can be the dominant, um, you know, race or the dominant country, uh, when it comes to mixed martial arts. So I think if China does get behind, uh, Zhang Wei Li, if they do get behind mixed martial arts, they, it is going, you're going to see a complete change in the landscape of MMA. It will, it will, if they start putting money into it and the UFC knows this, they, they understand this. That's why they have one of their PIs in Beijing, Um, because they, they know it, they know they need that market. And if they start getting support and backers from that market and investors from that market, it's, it's game over. It will be the number one sport in the world. It will be the biggest sport in the world. It will be the only sport that is absolutely hundred percent worldwide that from every single corner of the universe of the, of the, of of the world that we're going to be having fighters if it gets to that point. Um, and so I think the UFC is banking on this happening. I think the UFC wants this to happen. They want these, they want China to, to see how big MMA can be because once you get that backing, once you get that, those, that financial backing, that type of support, and you start bringing in athletes like that, everyone else is going to have to follow suit. You're going to see, like I said, the entire MMA landscape is going to change. If, if China starts doing that, if they start, training their their children and supporting their children from a young age and putting them through this system to become uh mixed martial artists every country is going to follow suit just like they did with the olympics there's an american training center there's a cuban training center there's, i mean there, there's training centers for every you know every country um <clears throat> we're going to see this we're going to see this if china if china gets on board th- this is th- this is for sure what's going to happen and so having uh, uh, Wei Li, Zhang Wei Li, Zhang Wei Li as as the champion, dude. This is this is huge. This is huge. Um, I don't think I do not think people are comprehending this. I do not think that people are understanding what is at stake here. Um, it could be the it could be one of the biggest moves that that's ever happened. Be one of the biggest things that's ever happened. And so I'm excited to see it. I kind of think, so this is, this is my, this is my math of the whole thing. So I think, I think within the next five years, if, if way, if Jean Wei Li stays, um, champ for a while within the next five years, you're going to start to see a huge influx of Chinese mixed martial artists just pouring onto the scene. You're going to start to see them on every single card, um, doing really well. And then, um, you know, I can see the UFC partnering with some, you know, Chinese entities for a while, but then I see China saying, we don't need the UFC. Like we could do this ourselves and we can do it better. Just like pride did just like one did saying, we don't really need you. We don't need your athletes. We've got the best athletes in the world. We, you know, we're, we're going to be on top and, now the UFC is going to have a rival. So I don't think, I think if the UFC doesn't, you know, mind their P's and Q's and doesn't, you know, button down all the, the hatches with, you know, contracts and everything like that, 
you're gonna see you're gonna see another takeover, which is good for the sport. Um, I think fighter pay is gonna go up because you're gonna have it's gonna be supported. It's gonna be supported better by multiple countries. It's gonna be supported by governments, probably. You know, it's. It, I just have no doubt that it's gonna to get to that point. It's 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 such. I mean, Dana has been saying it forever. Like this is the only sport that everybody speaks. That everybody understands fighting. You, if a fight goes on at, near you, you're turning and watching it. You're looking to see what's going down. It, it it's the only thing that's universal. You know, you could have two little kids outside throwing a football, and you could have people walk right past and not even bat an eye because they don't care about football. Kids kicking a soccer ball, baseball, all the stuff. You know, all these other sports. People don't really pay attention to, but you you see a fight, you see an altercation going down. You're looking, you're checking it out. You want to see what's happening. It's the it's the truest language, uh, it's the truest sport um, that that really speaks to everybody. And so you're going to see it become worldwide. And I think once China gets on board, it is game over. It is game over from that point. So. I'm excited, man. I'm excited to see it. I, cause I, like I said, I think there's gonna be more money in the sport, which means the fighters get paid better. Hopefully, it means that you know fighters will be making boxing money, and <clears throat> there's gonna be more organizations, which means more people get exposure. And I just think it's, I think it's the best thing for the sport. And so I'm excited to see it. I'm, ex- I'm, I'm high on uh, Jean Wei Li. I think she is, she's the right person to come in and and, and open up this new era and really um open up a whole new avenue for for fighters so man i'm ready for i'm ready to bring it on i'm ready for her to bring it on i'm ready for it but she's got to get through yoana first i think that she has everything that it takes to do it i mean here's the thing is she's only had three fights go to decision and every other fight has not made it out of the second round she's never been out of the second round other than her three decisions she finishes fights. She goes in and she finishes fights. I think if I had to make my prediction, this is this is what I think is going to happen. They're going to take the first round. They're going to test each other out on the striking, uh, and they're going to you know they're going to they're they're going to do their thing. I think Joanna is going to do fairly well. She's going to be point fighting. She's going to be landing lots of punches, lots of kicks, uh, trying to slow Whaley down, stop her from moving forward. Whaley is going to be moving forward, throwing power punches, uh, trying to put Joanna to sleep. And I think in the second round, I think it's, it's going to go to the second round. I think that Whaley Zhang's going to get some of her timing down. She's going to shoot. She's going to she's going to get in the clinch. Whatever she, however she's going to do it, I think she's going to get Yoana to the ground and she's going to finish the fight on the ground. Um, probably probably a submission, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was ground and pound either. Uh, but that's my prediction of this fight. I think uh, Whaley Zhang wins second round from the ground but let me know what you think let me know if i'm wrong let me know if i'm crazy Uh, i love doing these i love talking about fighting i love breaking these down for you guys and you know i i I not you know so much of the credit goes to all the other podcasters all the other um news outlets all the other mma analysts that are out there uh doing their thing like we should support more of of uh of mma news and mma analysts and 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 do more of that because they put in a lot of work and a lot of effort. And I sit there, I get to, I have the benefit that I get to sit and listen to a lot of them before I do these breakdowns. And so not all of these are a hundred percent my ideas. A lot of them are my ideas or, or I take with, I take from the things that I've already been thinking. And if I hear someone else say it and they kind of you know, affirm that that's, that's what's going to happen. Um, then, you know, I, I usually jump with it, but, um, and a lot of this, you know, I get on my own. I do a lot of my own study. I have time to do it. So um, I sit and I, I, I study a lot of this on my own. And I just pick up what I think, you know, my opinion of the way things are going to go down. But I love doing this. So please support it. Give me a like, subscribe, and a share. Uh, let me know what I can be doing better. Always feel free to leave a comment. I love getting back to people, uh, people who actually watch these. And I, I love uh, interacting with, with fans and, and listeners and even haters at times. I don't really like, <laughs> I do take it personal when people are hating on me, but you know, I know that's part of the, that's part of the game. Um, you can find us on, uh, 
Facebook at Still Fist Fight Night. You can find us on Instagram at Still Fist Fight. You can find this podcast on the Undefeated by Choice podcast on YouTube. You can also find my fighter interviews that I do for Still Fist on iTunes, uh, YouTube, and iHeartRadio. Um, you can get a hold of me anyway, any form of social media. You can get a hold of me uh, for sponsorships. I'm always looking for people to help me out to continue to do this thing that I love. I'm passionate about, you know, I try, I try to put in a lot of time, a lot of effort to give you guys really uh, condensed, thought out, uh, you know, pieces of information to, uh, regarding the fights and fighters. And um, so I'm always looking for sponsors. And of course, you can get a hold of Still Fist if you're looking for bigger sponsorships to really uh, get your name out there and uh, and help out the fighters as well. So um, that's all I got for you. We got the fights this weekend, got kickboxing. So start out your weekend, go watch some kickboxing, go watch some of Utah's talent, go out there and do their thing uh, at the Union Event Center, doors open at 6, fight start at 7, you can buy tickets at the door or at stillfistfight.com, I also think you can buy them from the fighters, I haven't talked to any fighters directly, but I'm pretty sure, almost 100% sure you can buy tickets from the fighters as well who are on the card, and uh, then then watch the fights this weekend, see what you, uh, what you think, um, I've got my bets in. Probably before I do my last video, I'll, guys, I'll let you guys know my, where, my, where my bets are at. Um, but I've, I have I constantly change them, so I can't tell you them today because I constantly change them. I hope to get one of these out on Friday before the fights. Actually, I'm not going to tell you guys my bets because then you're going to take you're going to steal my bets, and then I won't make all the money. So I'll tell you after <laughs> after the fight what my bets were, and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. But until next time, everybody, be good to yourself, be good to each other. I love you.